Welcome to episode 202, double twos, of Clarity Compressed. I'm Paul J. Daly, I'll be your host, and today we're gonna talk about how you get better by messing things up. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. All right, I don't know how many of you have heard of something called a POAP. P-O-A-P, POAP. A POAP is, stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol, and it's a form of NFT or non-fungible token that you can issue when you have an event or something that people come to that acts like a digital ticket stub that can verify attendance and then allow the organizer to interact with the attendees over a long period of time and maybe even sell that stub for money, which could generate 10% back to the event organizer. Are you confused yet? <laughs> so a POAP is something that I've recently tried to do, issuing a POAP. And let me break it down because I know like I could be playing way far over the horizon for many of you, and I'm just learning myself. So talking about learning through messing things up. If you're willing to learn, first you have to be willing to be confused. So if you're willing, if you're still with me on the podcast, that means you're willing to be confused to learn a little something. I personally have been willing to be confused as I've learned through this POAP extravaganza, I'll call it. Well, because it was tied to something. So here's the, how it breaks down. I am a part of an organization. I started an organization called Automotive State of the Union. It's an organization that um, started in COVID, rallied a bunch of dealers, talked about it last week. If you didn't hear the podcast last week, you can go listen to it. And basically, we had this great live stream, and I want to do something for the people who were there, the people who registered to be there, and I wanted to do something that is progressive thinking and forward thinking. So I'm going into the world of NFTs or non-fungible tokens. You probably know what that is, maybe a little bit if you're in this community. It has to do with cryptocurrency. You buy it with cryptocurrency and NFT is something that you own forever. It's verifiable proof that you have ownership of something. And so POEPS came along as a way to basically verify that you were at an event. So if you imagine for a second that you went to a football game, and in that football game, something epic happened, right? There was a massive comeback. Not only now do you have the story, but if your ticket was an NFT or a POAP, right? If your ticket was an NFT, right? I'm sorry, not a POAP. If your ticket was an NFT, now you have proof forever that you were at that game. And you have proof of that in your ticket stuff. And then maybe, because it was such a historic game, that ticket now has value on the secondary market. Well, now you can sell that ticket because it's, it's verified proof that you were there. So that's some of what we're talking about. So I had this event. I wanted to give people a little bit of proof that they were there. And not only that, I wanted the community that was there to feel a little bit more important because they're an original troublemaker, right? They were at the event and they decided to say yes. So I created what is called a POAP. If you want to learn about it, you can go POAP.xyz. And so... Then I was able to create this little digital token. We have a cool graphic for it. And now I'm helping people understand how to claim this and put it somewhere in like a little, uh, a digital wallet. I'll, I'll say it that way. And in doing this, I have been very confused over the last few days because I've had to learn about POEPs, learn how to set them up, learn how am I going to educate people on how to receive it and have it because I believe it's going to be important in the future. But more than that, I believe it's important that we start to be practitioners and be willing to mess things up as the world is shifting. So we have to learn. So I've been willing to be confused. And even before that, I was willing to say to everybody, we're going to issue a POAP before I knew how to do it, right? So I knew that that would like lock me into it and mean that I now I have to do it because I told everybody that I was going to do it. So it's been a few days now since the event. The event was on Monday. It is now, uh, I'm recording this actually on a Wednesday. Um, so it's been a couple of days and I've been diving deep into this POAP world and it's been a lot of fun and I'm starting to see the way other people are using them. And now we've officially created actually two POAPs and so they are NFTs. So the one is for attendees and the other one I created is just for the speakers, the people that, that have spoken at the event. And here's the thing, I believe that 
This is the first NFT created specifically for the retail automotive industry. I don't think anyone else has done one, so I think this is the first one that's been created. So um, I feel like that'll be cool historically to look back and we'll probably laugh. Hey, you didn't know what pull-ups were. You guys just didn't even do anything with NFTs. That was the first one. But the whole principle is that unless I was willing to be confused, and I still don't know how we're going to execute to this. We're executing as we speak, so we'll see how it actually goes. But unless you're willing to be confused and get some things wrong, you're not going to learn anything. Because I guarantee you that I've learned exponentially faster about POAPs and this area of NFTs exponentially faster because I dove in and decided to start making, to start making NFTs, to start making mistakes, right? By making promises to people that I thought I could keep. So I hope that by listening to this podcast, you are also becoming more educated about it, that you may step into the world and start to tinker around yourself. And even if it's not in the world of POAPs and it's not in the world of NFTs, that's fine, right? It's not a requirement uh, for membership. But I hope that you take a step and you are willing to make some mistakes. We're really down to our last week of 2021. This is it. We have a week left, a little bit more than a week, but about a week. And what are you going to do in these final days that set you up to make some mistakes next year? Because if you feel like you have everything so planned and so structured that it's guaranteed to work, well, then you're not pushing the boundaries. It's like if you're, if you're working out and you're doing reps and you're, you're lifting weights that don't challenge your body and don't like tear the muscles and create some pain, right? Then there's no growth. Then you don't learn anything. You don't grow. You don't actually get any healthier, right? You could actually be going backwards even though you're doing motion. And a lot of times in life and business, we go through motions of things that we're good at or are easy for us or maybe even very low value activities, right? A lot of low value activities happening on these things sometimes, right? You're just fiddling around with your technology. So I wanna challenge you to think, what are the things that are gonna push you toward making mistakes? It's easy to migrate toward the things we're good at and we don't make mistakes, but grab something new, whether it's a new talent, a new business deployment, um, a new strategy, uh, you know, don't bet the farm, but make small bets. You know, make small bets so that, you know, you can figure out how to win and lose and then you make big bets. So that's my encouragement to you this week, heading in to the final days of 2021. How can you set yourself up to be willing to make some mistakes so that you can really learn and substantially grow in 2022. It has been an honor and a pleasure to spend time with you over this year. And guess what? We're coming back next year. This is no secret. Coming back next year, and we're gonna see what 2022 brings us. I don't think we ever would have known what the end of 2021 would have looked like at the beginning of 2021. Yeah, we have a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things to challenges and a lot of things to like pay attention to, but I would argue that we are infinitely better off as a community at the end of 2021 than we were at the beginning of 2021. One of those reasons is that we've gotten to spend some time together. So all the best. May blessings be upon your family, your loved ones through the holiday season. I'm eternally grateful for you spending some time with me here this year. And we'll spend some time together next year.